What is up, guys? Ricardo Sign here. I am back finally. It's been a while, I know. Um, just kind of excited with all the new Sun and Moon 2 stuff. Uh, but I am back, and I'm going to be doing a video on the top 10 cards of the new set, which is going to include Sun and Moon 2 from Japan, which is like Islands. Islands Rise, I, I'm not going to say them, but um, yeah, so the two Sun and Moon sets and then the one Sun and Moon, uh, ex one expansion pack, which has a lot of reprints, but we're, I, we're only getting the new stuff. Um, there's a couple cool cards from that set, uh, but this set, I feel like definitely a step up over Sun and Moon 1, like by, de I mean definitely, like there's a lot of new cards that, in Sun and Moon, that didn't really impact the meta, like what some decks play one Kukui. Um, I feel like this set's definitely going to impact the meta more, and I will get into that more um, in the video. So, for honorable mentions, these are cards that are like, alright, you know, um, so some of the overhyped cards I didn't include, uh, I just to name a couple, uh, Suda Wudo was going to be like, oh man, Mega Ray Counter, blah, 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 blah. Um, I, I don't, I mean, Mega Ray already gets countered by Parallel City. Uh, and that's really all there is to it. If you play Parallel City, you don't need to waste a spot on your bench. And against all other decks, um, if you bench them to four, they're just going to get to discard their Shaman. So, it's not really that good. Uh, a couple more overhyped cards I want to go into real quick. Um, Machoke, uh, was actually just released, or just leaked, um, I think this week or something. But Machoke's ability is that, uh, prevent all effects of it, or prevent... The spread of damage counters on your bench. So that pretty much means, from attacks and abilities, so that pretty much means Decidueye is not going to work, Trunnion and Break is not going to work. So really good stuff, actually. But the problem is both situations, whether it be Decidueye or Trevenant, you are under item lock. Trevenant's ability stops you from playing items. Bioplume stops you from playing items. So you're not going to be able to get that one one line of Machoke out, it's just not going to happen. If it was a basic Pokemon, maybe, but it's it's not even a basic. Um, then there were a couple more, like a supporter locking Sableye. Uh, I mean, it, that'll be definitely annoying to play against. It'll be like uh, Exeggutor from Plasma. Freeze? Don't miss uh, I probably butchered that. But um, yeah, there's a couple more. But anyways, under the cards I actually think are decent, they're just not good enough to make the list, in my opinion. Um, we have Tornator, Tornator TX, uh, 190 HP, Tanky Beast, uh, with the water, not the best considering the new, uh, <laughs> new water support we got. Uh, his first attack is 20 for a DCE, and if he gets hit, you put 8 dam damage counters on your defending Pokemon. Actually hilarious. Um, yeah, no, that's really funny. Uh, this is like a bursting balloon. But you're not going to be using that attack. Second one does 160, and then like you discard two fire or something like that. The reason why people are going to be playing this, I'm pretty sure, is the last attack, the GX attack. Uh, Nitro Charge, I think. I didn't put the translations for honorable mentions. Um, pretty much, you attach five energy cards from your discard pile to any of your Pokemon. So this card would pretty much only be played in Volcanion. And I think rightfully so. I think this card is pretty good in that situation. The only problem I, I see with it is by late game, by the time you're actually going to want to use this attack, all your energy is going to be on the board anyway, so uh, I guess if you're playing Flareon, that's a really good comeback card, but other than that, I mean, you're probably going to have like two powered up Volcanions by turn like 10 or something like that, when you're actually going to want to use this guy. Or you could always go for turn one Acrobike, but I mean, you know, to try to get five energy in the, in the discard pile turn one so you can Nitro Flame. Uh, which is what I was thinking of, but it's it's not that practical and probably won't put in as much work as some people hope. Um, Alolan Ninetales GX. Now, the first attack, I'm pretty sure, is just do 50 anywhere on the board, which is actually kind of funny. That's the Fates Clyde uh, Meowth attack, which a lot of people are playing in the Situation Vileplume. Second attack is 160, discard to energy. And third attack for a DCE heals. Um, no, it's you move is... I don't know. I, I all I know is it, it wasn't it wasn't phenomenal. It was um I can I can try to pull it up right now. But it was like it, it wasn't anything substantial. Um but anyways, uh Alola Nine Tails, the reason why I see this good is uh spoiler alert, there is Aqua Patch. Um Aqua Patch is an insane 
I know emails would pop up on here. Um, I'm interested in seeing water support. Uh, and unfortunately, Lapras, which I'm going to talk about later, is weak to grass. So if you don't want to, if you don't want to have that grass weakness, you definitely want to be playing Nine Tails. Um, okay, and I finally got the GX attack. Move all damage cards from this Pokemon to opponent's active Pokemon. Really good. I'm not going to complain. If it doesn't get one shotted, you just bam. And it's not even like damage change. It's like you straight up, you're not even switching. You just move them all. So I really like that. But yeah, it pretty much water box without the grass weakness. And also, Alolan Vulpix has a free attack. Absolutely amazing. I think you search attack for two Pokemon, which is like Call for Family. A couple other Pokemon had it, but it's free. And that is incredibly good because you can just get like a Nine Tails and another Vulpix. And it's just good. So I expect to see this card in tournaments. I think it's I think it's really solid. Um, it's like Lapras, but it's stage one in essence. Um, then we have this Lorantis, which I think is also really hyped up. Um, this Lorantis's ability is uh, all your grass and fire Pokemon do 20 more damage to the defending Pokemon, and of course this stacks. You can have four Lorantis in play, and suddenly your top Bulu will be doing. What, 100 for one energy? Like, come on, that's busted. I, I I, don't know. The only reason I didn't put it in the top 10 is because it's so situational. Some people would think that you can kind of just pop it into Vespaquine. But when you think about it, Fomantis and Lorantis, two Pokemon, like, it's it's worth as much out on the field as it is in the discard pile, if you think of it like that. Um, but I, this might spark a whole new generation of grass decks, because I know top of Bulu's out there. A uh, really good grass attacker, and people might even opt to play in Volcanion. I don't, I wouldn't recommend it because you you you're not gonna play Forest. Um, but like it's good. Like if you pair it with Lorantis GX, uh, because they both evolve from Fomantis, you play like a two two, or you can play three Lorantis GX and then or three of this Lorantis and two GX and still play four Fomantis. If you have Revitalizer, you get the Fomantis back. Um, I think this is really good. If people make it work, then I I think this card is gonna work out because really good. Um, and the next card is Trevenant. Now, they're reprinting this guy, not the one from XY. I'm not going to say unfortunately, it's going to jinx that. It's going to jinx it. Um, so basically, his first attack, oh, and he's a grass Pokemon. Get him out in the first turn. Uh, for a DCE, 30 times, it's called Polterguy. Um, yeah, this game guard level X. And there's 30 times the number of item cards in your opponent's hand. Pair this bad boy with Vile Plume, and suddenly you're just hitting for like, I don't know, oodles amount of damage per turn. I, I don't know if this is going to work out. Like, we saw a Knocked Owl in like Breakthrough, I think. Uh, had the high, high flight, something flight, did 20 for each item card in your opponent's hand. Oh, Knocked Owl, Vile Plume. I was hyped about that, but that did not work. This might be different, however, because it's uh, slightly more HP. Um, that's 30 instead of 20 times, and you can get it first turn with Forest. So, yeah, I think it, it uh, Trevenant and Vileplume could definitely be a really fun rogue deck. Um, I might even try to build. Alright, so going on to the actual top 10. Number 10, we have Rescue Stretcher. So, cute little card here. Um, says, choose one Pokemon from your discard pile, put it in your hand, or, or... Choose three Pokemon and shuffle them back into your deck. Now, why would you want to play this over Super Rod? Super Rod seems a lot more consistent. Well, that's a good question. Um, the reason why you play this card is, I, I would say in decks that, I mean, definitely in decks that don't run basic energy, right? Because if you're playing, if you're playing like Giratina, Seismitoad, and Expanded, you really don't care about shuffling basic energy back. Um, and given the option between putting it right in your hand or shuffling a three Pokemon, um, and another thing I was thinking of is Rescue Stretcher. It, you can think of it as a super rod, but it it utilize, utilizes itself in early and late game. The super rod only utilizes itself in late game, shuffling all your Pokemon, maintaining a healthy deck, then you'll be top decking Pokemon, energy, and everything's good. Um, the, the good thing about Rescue Stretcher is if you're playing something like um, Mega Rayquaza, uh, you want to go aggressive, you want to discard everything. Uh, and if you draw it, or if you, like, if you draw a super rod early game, like, what are you going to do with that thing? Shuffle back in, like, there's going to be nothing to shuffle in. Whereas, like, Rescue Stretcher, you could hypothetically, like, Ultra Ball away a Mega Ray, um, and something else, and then, you know, Hoopa, get everything. Uh, then once you draw the Spirit Link, then you can Rescue Stretcher back to Mega Ray, and I, I see this, I see this kind of, you, you can do a lot of things with this. And also, um, 
I like this uh, because the, you get in some awkward situations with super odd sometimes where um, you kind of have to super odd back in energy and you don't want to do that all the time because mega turbo and yeah, I don't know. Um, I also put mega meter on here uh, because of the whole mega turbo thing. But I mean, you probably still want to play super odd. Some people might opt to play this, however. I don't know. I think it's a cute card. I think it definitely has potential. Number nine is Mallow, a cute little supporter we have. Choose two cards from your deck, shuffle the rest of your deck, put the chosen cards top of your deck in any order. So, pretty much like a Missy's Determination, but a lot, a lot better. Um, I mean, I want to say a lot better because you don't get to put them in your hand. However, you have Shaman EX, which does allow you to, hypothetically, if you want to Ultra Ball for Shaman and then Mallow, you got to be a little bit careful. You can't Mallow and then Ultra Ball. I, if you try to Mallow Shaman, don't screw it up. Do the right order. But so pretty much, it's like a double... If you play it correctly, it's going to be a double computer search, um, which on turn one decks like Vileplume or Trevenant, it's going to be absolutely insane. And I'll talk about Trevenant later because... Phantom's a grass type, everyone, and you know what that means. But um, yeah, in decks like this, hypothetically, you have a force in your hand, right? You got a force in your hand. Uh, Ultra Ball, you can Ultra Ball away two grass Pokemon, and then you can Mallow, and then you can get a Shaman, the Mallow for the Revitalizer in the forest. Like you can just the forest is mainly what you're going for, but you can like I would say in like any deck, like I mean, I mean, like come on. And also, I put Vespaquin up here. Uh, because there's, I mean, Vesperquan plays Unknown, and Vesperquan plays Acrobike. So, I mean, if, I guess it's kind of a gimmick. If you know, if you need 10 damage, and you Mellow, and then you Acrobike, um, it's generally not what you're going to be wanting to use that for. Uh, in Vesperquan's case, it's usually getting out the Revitalizer, getting your DCE when you need it, and because you run Unknown, you can just leave Unknown on your bench. Um, and Mallow's literally, a, like I said before, it's a double computer search if you play it correctly. Um, unfortunately, I don't think many people are going to play correctly, uh, but I, I see a lot of potential in this guy, uh, this girl, actually, but, uh, I mean, a lot of decks, like, where you don't run a heavy shaman count, like Turbo Dark, I can't see it being incredible, I can see it being good, but, uh, I can't see it being used to its full potential, because it's two cards, um, but yeah, number eight, we have Hala, Hala says, shuffle your hand in your deck, and then draw four cards, you already use your GX attack. Draw seven instead. Um, immediately come to mind Professor Oak's new theory from Heart Gold Soul Silver. Pretty much says shuffle one and draw six. Now I'm not saying that this replaces N. It does not replace N at all. Um, in fact, you're still going to want to play the full N count. Um, the only reason how uh, I think is really good is if you're playing a, a strictly not even a GX deck. If you're playing a, I have an example here. Um, Drampa. Drampa has a GX attack that you generally want to be using early game to get as many cards as possible and set everything up. Um, Drampa's GX attack lets you shuffle and draw 10, which is insane. Um, so pretty much the logic behind Drampa would just be to use a GX attack and then holla for 7 cards of the rest of the game. Uh, which is really good, you know, like, when you get... I don't know. I mean, generally you would say that Sycamore would be a better option. But in some cases, it's not. And you don't want to be discarding resources that you'd rather keep in your deck. So, I don't know. I can't see pe people playing more than one Hala, um, purely because it's not that good. But I can see people playing one in GX decks. And also, Tauros, Madball GX, sometimes you play early game. I don't know. If, if, you're, if you're playing, like, a, a Tech Tauros and an Evil Tall, Hala probably wouldn't be worth it. But if you're just playing, like, a Tauros Garb, um, I can definitely see it working. Number seven, Altar of the Sun. Now, this guy, I like this card. Each player's fire and metal Pokemon have no weakness. And you know what that means. That's right, Volcanion cannot be hit for weakness. Hallelujah, got all this water support. Um, I mean, Volcanion it hasn't been a relevant deck in standard at all. Waterbox has been... A pretty big threat. I mean, not that huge, but now it's going to be a really big threat with this set. Um, but yeah, obviously this is going to be saving a choice of Volcanion. You're going to be able to, you know, play three of these things and then pretty much never be hit for weakness unless they can stadium replace every turn, which is not the easiest thing in the world to do. So you 
Barb, and as, as you can see coming up, Barb isn't going to be all that hot uh, when this site comes out. So Volcano actually might shine, and I'll talk about that a little bit later. And then we have Solgaleo, a card that has been kind of featured in a couple of rogues, such as Lurantis Solgaleo. And I, I think it's cute. I don't think it's bad. Um, the cool thing about Solgaleo, though, is that we know Volcano is going to be playing three Altar of the Sun, obviously. I mean, Water Waterbox is just going to be too much of a threat coming in Intercontinentals. Um, so, so the good thing about this is Solgaleo can actually play two of its own. Um, but does it really need to? And the funny part about this is that if you play an Altar of the Sun and you're playing Solgaleo, they can't stadium replace you unless they play something like a Skyfield, which I can surely see them playing, you know, something just because of this whole thing. Uh, Solgaleo plays Altar of the Sun. Volcanion only has Altar of the Sun and can't hit it for weakness, which is actually a really big deal because that means that, you know, Solgaleo can survive two hits instead of one. But um, it's going to be really interesting to see where this plays out. I think Solgaleo is still too clunky to really be considered a tier 1. Um, but we'll, we'll have to see where Volcanium goes. I, I see potential in this guy, um, but I'm not too sure it'll it'll shine as much as people think. Or as much as much as I think, at least. And speaking of tour removal, we have Field Blower. I like to call it Leaf Blower. Um, so Leaf Blower says, Choose up to two in any combination of tool and stadiums in play and discard them. Isn't that great? Tool Scrapper's back. Isn't that wonderful? Now, a lot of people underlook this card, and I think it's mainly because Garb isn't as prominent as it used to be. Evil Tall Garb has kind of died off. There's not really a lot of Garb Odor in the format right now. So why play Field Blower besides this guy right here? Well... We have we have other things. We have other things. Um, a main example of this being Darkrai, where Darkrai likes to run EXP share. Darkrai likes to run Fighting Fury Belt. And if you're playing something like Vespaquine or Mega Mewtwo against Darkrai, that extra ten or twenty or thirty, you know, that extra pretty much the extra forty damage that you can hit on Darkrai by discarding its Fighting Fury Belt is absolutely huge. So I think Tur Turbo Dark is definitely going to take a hit. Because um, if you discard your EXP shares, there's no way for them to stream the energy on the board. They have Evil Tulls, true, who they do. Um, if you get rid of them in their early game, and then you just Fuel Blower... Um, yeah, I'm <laughs> Fuel Blower is definitely going to hit Darkrai. Um, but it's also going to hit, you know, decks that like to run Choice Bane, which is another really cool tool card that helps out Best of Wine and other decks to that nature. So... Yeah, any deck that runs any tools, Fighting Fury Belt, Freeze Ban, EXP Share, which, I mean, all of them will after Choice Ban comes out. There's been a couple of decks like Best Wine that don't run tools, but I, I think now they will with Choice Ban. Um, but Field Blower just gets those out of the way. I This is probably a staple, honestly. I think this is a staple. Um, unless you're... I, I wouldn't think of a deck that you'd play that this wouldn't be a staple. Maybe decks like Best Wine where it's a little tight on space. But I definitely see it. And it's not even card. It's not even like 0-6. Um, but yeah, I have Volcano up here because uh, we're going to bring it back from before. If Garb is uh, no float zones, I mean, Volcano is obviously going to play some of these. Uh, discard the float zone from Garb. Now you can use your steam up. Yeah, Volcano is going to be pretty good. Um, or it might not, depending on how well Aqua Patch does. Um, so for number five, this personally, is my favorite card of the entire set. My favorite. Um, Drampa GX. Now, I was looking at this card at first. I didn't really see that much potential. Um, oh, it's a colorless. It has a couple cute attacks. Then I started testing it, and then it was busted. I mean, okay, I'll, I'll get into this. So for a colorless plus 20, discard special energy. All right. Find something against, like, Vesper Quinn, you know. They, they lead Tauros. They just, you know, get rid of that DCE, and... and they have to find another one. And because you're only doing 20, they can't really do much about it. Now this next attack, Berserk, I really, really, really like. It does 80 damage. If you bench Pokemon have any damage cards on, this attack does 70 more damage. So it does 150. So what? 150, it's not that's not it's not that good. Um well, you take into account Choice Band, which adds 30, and suddenly you're hitting for 180. Now, but but wait, but wait, there's 3 energy, and you have to have 
damage cards when you register Pokemon. So we have some setup. We have some setup we have to attain. Um, how I've been testing it, I've been using Team Magma Secret Base. Um, yeah, laugh at me all, all you want. This might be a gimmick rogue that no one's going to play. But hear me out, hear me out. You Magma Base, bench anything, literally anything, even a Shaman. Um... And then you just Elixir, DCE. I would actually recommend playing Manaphy in this deck so you could um, hypothetically get for a retreat. Um, but then again, you couldn't attack turn one. Uh, but anyways, yeah. So you can just Elixir, DCE, Choice Ban, bench any Pokemon, literally, with a Magma Base, and just Berserk for 100, 180 turn one. I don't know. I think it's good. It has set up. Um, I, like to I like to compare this to Mega Ray. Uh, I, I know Mega Ray players, Pokemon Master Kenny included, this isn't Mega Ray, this, this garbage is not Mega Ray. Uh, it's Mega Ray. Uh, I, it has set up, Mega Ray has set up. The only thing I can see about this, uh, is it doesn't have the same setup strategy, where Mega Ray just goes for like, oh, hey, look at that. Ooh, more emails. Um, whereas, you know... Mega Ray has Hoopa, Mega Ray has blah, 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 blah. Um, Drampa actually has his GX attack. Great Revolution GX shuffle in your hand and draw 10. Um, so different, different forms of setup, but I mean, Mega Ray needs Mega Turbo. Drampa needs Max Elixir. I don't know. And this is a basic, so you don't even need Delta Evolution. Isn't that great? Um, but anyways, partners for this guy. Yeah. Literally what I just said. Thanks, PowerPoint. Um, but yeah, Jamfa. Uh, you don't have to play with Manaphy. You can play like Magirna. You can play Garb. You, you can play whatever. It's like it's like Mega Ray, right? Um, you, I don't think Volcanion is gonna do anything though, because you know, I mean, it's the only Mega Turbo is the only relevant thing that you would use Volcanion for. But yeah, there is Drampa, number four best card. Aqua Patch. Sound familiar? I thought so. I thought <laughs> it's Dark Patch. It's literally Dark Patch. For water Pokemon. Don't get me wrong. And that artwork is to die for. Um, but anyways, yeah, uh, this water box is definitely, I'll read it. Attach basic water from your discard to one you bench water Pokemon. I mean, Turbo Dark runs four elixir for Dark Patch. And, it, it, it's gonna it, this this card is gonna be worth so much. It's, it's gonna be stupid. Um, like the only problem I see with it is like Vessel Coin, and if any of the new Grass Rogue I'm thinking of gets popular, other than that though, I mean this thing like 160, bam bam. Um, kind of the cute thing you can do about like you can do with this is like if you for whatever reason need to like retreat, you can even get kind of gimmicky and play Max Potion with it, like. If you retreat, um, then use Max Potion, and then Aqua Patch, like, I don't know, you could play some shenanigans. Uh, I probably wouldn't recommend playing Max, Max Potion, though. Uh, it's, you want to get cute with it with Rough Seas. But, um, yeah, no, this guy's going to be really good. Just Blizzard Burn every turn. And when he, when he goes down, see, the problem with Water Box is when, once a Lapras goes down, it, it's like, you can Super on then Elixir, but, it, like, once one of these guys goes down, it's really hard to get up another one. The Aqua Patch, it will not be a problem. Like I mentioned, I'm pretty sure. Elixir, yep, yep. And also I mentioned at the beginning of the video, Nine Tails. Um, you can also use Aqua Patch against Nine Tails, and especially because his attack, instead of Blizzard Burn um, preventing you from attacking next turn, it actually discards two energy. So if you want to go alone on Nine Tails, definitely got to play for Aqua Patch. Definitely. But Aqua Patch is definitely going to be a game changer. Water is going to skyrocket in popularity. And this might encourage people to play Vesper Coin. Um, Choice Band is definitely going to encourage people to play Vesper Coin. So I don't know. It might be complete garbage because Vesper Coin. Then again, we have Nine Tails. So Aqua Patch is going to be good regardless because it, it's going to adapt to the meta. Number three. Uh, do I have to say it? They did it. The Pokemon Company listened. And they gave it. Grass type phantom. All right. Um, if you don't know what this means, let me just without even saying anything. Yeah. Um, turn one Trevenant expanded. I don't know. Uh, like 
like like turn one trevenant wasn't already busted enough like like you couldn't already ascend into the trevenant oh my lord okay so uh i don't know how i feel about this the if this doesn't get a ban uh expand is gonna be all trev all trev um because i think the problem with trev is not getting a turn one item lock uh you don't have to worry about it with this guy jesus christ busted okay i'm not gonna go too much into that about that but choice ban a card we have all been waiting for except for number one pretty much increases damage done to ex or gx by 30. so i it, it it's it's silver bangle i i think it's silver bangle the only difference between this and silver bangle is back when silver bangle was around you had things like Flareon, you had things like blah blah blah, I can't think of any Night March, I don't know. You had, like, you had decks that wouldn't, like, Choice Band would just, or Silver Bangle would just be a dead card, right? That you'd have cards that don't benefit as much because you wouldn't be hitting these Pokemon for extra damage. Now, we live in a metagame dominated by EX Pokemon, EX and GXs, especially with the new set. Um, now you can pretty much hit 30 more, uh, just, I mean, like, you look at, you, you pretty much look at all the tier 1 decks not named Vesperquine. In Vesperquine, you don't even need Choice Band to hit. Um, Volcanion, EX, Darkrai, EX, um, tier 1. Dude, I don't even know where this metagame's at right now. <laughs> if you want to say Evil Tall, I don't, Evil Tall's not really tier 1, but whatever. Um, all these Pokemon EXs, you can hit them for 30 more. Um. And this is going to help infinitely more. I was talking about before. Grandpa, yeah, I can hit that magic 180. Vesperquin, definitely going to want to play, like, uh, I would say two. Two's fair. Three, three's clunky. Two's fair. Um, yeah, nine, that's like three Pokemon in, in the discard pile. Like, that's an extra three. Like, that's absolutely insane. Like, you can, you can still, like, you might be able to cut the Pokemon count down, like, two even. Like, even if you play, like, 26 Pokemon... And then you have like two choice band. Like that's that that's gonna be insane. Vesperquine's gonna I mean, this is a major buff for Vesperquine. Um yeah, man. I don't know. Vesperquine's kind of busted. And Tauros, I kind of threw in here because I thought it'd be kind of cute that you could like magvol. But now that I think about it, don't play choice band with Tauros. Just, just take that out of there. <laughs> but also I wanted to mention it's not specifically on here, but um you would think that playing this in Darkrai would be a really smart idea, uh, but between, because Fighting Fury Belt is really what makes Turbo Dark stand out. That's really what buffs its Vesperquine matchup, and EXP Share is also a tool that Turbo Dark really needs. So the reason why I don't see playing Choice Band in Turbo Dark as being the best idea is because you, I mean, you're already running two tools. You're already running, like, what, two Fighting Fury Belt, two EXP Share, like, one Choice Band, you could get, like, cute and do that, but that's the same reason people don't play one Muscle, one Fighting Fury Belt, and, like, Turbo Dark, or Evil Tall and Expanded, like, I, you can, but it's like EXP Share, you already got that. And for number one, we have Tapu Lele, <laughs> the most busted card in all of existence, actually, that's not the most busted card in all of existence, one of the most busted cards we have in the format right now, or that we will have. Um, its ability, it's uh, Stellar Guidance. Uh, once during your turn, when you play it, choose your deck for support or reveal a point in your hand. The reason why I'm putting this number one, if it wasn't... I'm kind of looking at the long run here, right? I'm looking at what cards will perform well in the future um, that will continue to improve... Um, for future metagames, uh, so Tapu Lele GX, definitely going to be two of in every deck next. I would say three of, three of is a little clunky, um, maybe three of, I don't know. But this card is going to be good, especially because, I mean, I, why am I saying three of? I mean, Jirachi wasn't a three of. Its attack is Arrow Ball. Great! We have a busted, like, ability and a busted attack. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't hit for weakness. I, mean, I say unfortunately. Um, yeah, Sex Ball hit for weakness. But Energy Drive, 20 times number of energy. So really solid attacker. Most decks play DCE, so should not be that big of a deal getting this guy out. And, yeah, I, got, I don't know what to say. It's just, it, it, it's Jirachi. And, he, you know, the beauty of it is he can't be Lysandered out. Like, Jirachi was, it was kind of awkward because, like, 
you know, especially when like Evil Tall was around, like you could just lie Sander at one of those things and just Y Cyclone and kill it. Like this thing, you you, you need a lie. And it has one retreat. So like if you lie, you can't lie Sander bait this thing. It's not like Hoopa or something. You can just attack one energy retreat. Um, but I mean, yeah, good attack and good ability, like phenomenal card. Um, I'd expect, like, you, buy, if you if you have money, do all in your ability to buy, buy a play side of these things, because these things are going to rock in price. Probably not going to be like Shaman until after World Championships, but expect this guy to go up in price. Um, so for the decks, this guy's really going to shine in. The Sijuai Vile Flume. Yeah, you know how they play Lugia and they play Jirachi? <laughs> yeah, that's funny. You can just play one of these guys now. And kind of have both in one. Uh, I think Lugia, you might still want to play one of. Maybe like two Lele and one Lugia, just for Deep Hurricane. Um, and then cut the, what, the Jirachi and the two, cut the Jirachi and two Lugia for two Lele and Lugia. Um, honestly, that's all I really need to do. Uh, and this is why I play them. Like, I, I personally like playing tech cards. Like, I will admit, I, I play, I play, I play Zerosic, I play AZ, um, I, you know, of course I play N, Lysander, and getting, like, the Lysander out, like, without having to worry about this thing, like, dying, like, that's, that's why Jirachi late game has always bugged me, because, like, you want to, you want to Jirachi for the Lysander, right, but you also don't want to give up two prizes, I mean, it's late game, two prizes is, is kind of a lot, um, of course, if you have Shaman on the bench, it's, it's, like, no harm done, but uh, you're probably not going to because the idea of the deck, you want to scour return all those guys away. Um, yeah, busted in this deck. Yeah. Um, Trevenant. I just wanted to bring up Trevenant because of the debate people were kind of having on like Facebook groups and stuff. Um, will Tapu Lele be good in Trev or not? Um... Because I guess the logic is, Level Ball lets you search out for Jirachi, you cannot search out for Lele. It, honestly, and I don't know how many Level Balls Trev plays, I honestly don't. Um, if you're playing a 4-4, especially with Forest, like with, I guess if you didn't have Forest, like, getting all the fans up on the board was kind of important. Now that you have Forest, uh, you, you still want to play Level Ball, don't get me wrong. But I just don't see the need of playing Jirachi. Um, because think about it. Your opponent's going to want to stash up on Lysanders anyways. Um, yeah, I mean, because you're going to be like... I mean, you're going to be item locking it. And leave a comment if anything I'm saying is like wrong or... You know, I'm dumb because I don't know Pokemon. Like, please. I I mean, this is just my logic. Um, Trevor runs ECEs. Uh, Tapu Lele, really solid attacker. Uh... But by by solid attacker, I mean like last last resort because you don't want to be attacking with Tapu Lele right if like you're not getting item lock on your opponent. Um, so I I would I'd recommend playing Tapu Lele over Jirachi. That's just my two cents. Um, because even even La I guess people were saying because like Lava Ball to get the Wally and you, you don't need that. You don't need that. You you're playing uh you're playing uh, Grass Phantom. You don't need but yeah, that is the top 10 list plus the honorable mentions. Like this video, leave a like uh, down below. Um, and uh, leave any comments for videos I should do in the future. Uh, I might do a League Cup report this weekend if I do well. Not telling you what I'm playing, but uh, might be some of you guys, like, I mean, some of my friends know, but uh, yeah, I might do a League Cup report if I do mod, like, if I, if I do mod really well, like, if I, Top at all, dually cup report. Um, gonna be expanded, gonna be fun. Uh, I don't know the expanded metagame very well. I know there's Evil Tall, I know there's uh, Decidueye Valflume, I know there's Trev Muck, I think. I, I, I don't know. Um, but yeah, hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you next time.